Hello and welcome to another video. I decided to talk about uh, a little bit about psychology and magic. So let's get uh, let's get started. Um, analytical psychology and magic are like the sides of two of of the same coin. It's uh, just like the body and the mind are not separate entities but rather there are different expressions of the same uh, thing so as uh, psychology and magic also form one single system whose goal is to uh, bring all the parts of a person's being uh, together the goal is to activate parts of the self that are that were previously dormant that we haven't used before and it can also help get rid of some uh, neurotic uh, symptoms now i'm basing this uh, this video and this information from uh, the middle pillar it's it's a book by uh, israel regardi that was in the he was a member of the golden dawn so i'm kind of explaining what he was saying in the book that's where i got this information and i'll try to leave a link in the description where you can download the the pdf book for for free if you're interested in reading it it's really really good anyway um when i say um when i say magic i don't mean the like the stage magic or the old superstition that uh um, it's all like black magic. It's all like satanic and and, and, and so on like the, the Hollywood type of magic and also people have uh, wrongly associated magic with the um, witchcraft and devil worship <clears throat> Because of the lies to told by uh, frauds and charlatans and uh, they didn't know how to, uh, or an actual practitioner that didn't know how to speak up and change that uh, perspective. Um, and even today, those who know about magic are hesitant to uh, to share the truth about it with with others. Maybe they don't uh, even understand them understand it themselves, or I'm not sure. It's uh, not a surprise then that uh, people have a lot of misconceptions about about magic and um, there aren't a lot of books that really explain it and what actually is now now maybe nowadays there they are but it, they don't really explain it what uh, how it actually works or what it actually is most of them are new age uh, bullshit basically and uh, the ones that do explain it, only a small group of uh, people uh, read them. Um, but even if you think of magic as being uh, related to some um, kind of inner, inner world that psychology is, you'll uh, have a better idea of what's, what's it all about. And for the people that are just starting to learn about magic the first step should be to uh to use psychology to understand uh themselves understand yourself in a better way as a as a whole until you know yourself in a in a deep way that psychology can uh, show you it can reveal to you you won't be able to uh, bring out the hidden parts of yourself and it's not as easy as it seems. You might think you're interested in magic because you want to escape from your problems, from the problems of the world. But it could be because you're trying to hide from uh, feelings of inadequacy or insecurity or whatever it might be. You might even uh, think you've found the answer in religion or, or science. A lot of people think that science well basic basically today science is a is the same thing as a as a religion 
um, it's it's really important to figure out your true motives and um, your attitude towards life before you start on the on the path of magic. And um, once you've done that, you can start to explore the other side of yourself, your own your own psyche. Basically, just work your work through your bullshit. Uh, purify yourself and then you can start with the with a clear mind to find out who who you are exactly and why you want to learn about this uh, spooky mysterious word about magic um, so magic is more about tapping into your creative and intuitive side than uh, analyzing things it's a way to help you um, recognize and connect with your spiritual side more. So right now, most ways of uh, dealing with these things are through are through magic. It's a way to integrate different parts of yourself and not just accept what uh, like your psychologist, or your therapist, or someone else uh, tells you. And uh, magic helps you understand deeper levels of your unconscious that can be hard to grasp just by um, thinking about religious figures of the of the past people like the, the Buddha and uh, like Jesus different teachers like that uh, all try to understand themselves and connect with their divine nature in different ways and uh, some techniques that religious figures use in the past like um, devotion uh, meditation uh, what else uh, contemplation and uh, they're similar in essence to what we call uh, magic today magic is a way of achieving a deeper level of um, levels of uh, the unconscious and it's uh, been developed into kind of uh, science even though it's unlikely that many people will fully realize their divine nature magic can still be useful for everyone it can help people become better and more efficient at uh, understanding themselves and the world around them these goals are possible for anyone to achieve uh, no matter how big or small their their vision is so in order to understand some basics some basic ideas about psychology and spirituality we can uh, again we'll take a look at the uh, and talk about the, the the two pillars again the pillars from kabbalah and also freemasonry they're like the two big columns that are placed in the in the middle of a temple and uh, that temple, that true temple, is is man. It's himself. It's his uh, his head. Um, and in Freemasonry, one is one column, one pillar is black, and the other one is white. So if you look here on this uh, Masonic tracing board, I guess it's not a good of the image, but on the on the left side you can see the that pillar is a little a little darker, has a dark shade to it. Then the pillar on the right and also in the middle farther into the distance you can see the the middle pillar and i'll make a video about uh, this tracing board and breaking down the symbolism in the freemasonic tracing boards for for the three uh, masonic levels but um, anyway so in order to understand some basic ideas about psychology we need to talk about those um, let's see so they're, they're symbols of uh, those two pillars are symbols of the different opposing forces that that exist in uh, in nature just like the temple represents different parts of our life and in our inner selves the two pillars represent different things like uh, light and dark hot and hot and cold the different dualities in people they can represent things like love and hate happiness or sadness thinking and feeling you know the internal external emotions living and dying uh, being awake or asleep basically 
any pair of opposites that we can think of can be found uh, in in these two pillars because again uh it's all about duality here on this material world so one of the key concepts taught to students of magic during uh, initiation is that um, leaning too far to one side or the other um, the other of the opposing forces is dangerous it's not smart to constantly swing between those two extremes of life you don't want to be all the way onto the right pillar or all the, all the way into the left pillar again that's the point of the middle pillar you want to be in the middle um, being too powerful leads to the loss of life being too emotional or loving may lead to, to weakness and the loss of uh, willpower and being too strict or just an asshole cruel and leads to um, to being close-minded when one quality is taken to the to the extreme without being balanced by its opposite it can lead to unhealthy state of of the consciousness of your mind um this is why in um, religious texts like uh, the Bhagavad Gita, it states, uh, be free from the pairs of opposite opposites. And this is a, uh, a book if you're not familiar with it. Uh, the idea that um, the idea is that in life there are two opposing forces, two opposite forces. And it's dangerous to lean too much towards one or or another, like a pendulum. That um, if you swing it too far in one direction, it can be it can be harmful. Uh, the idea is to find a, a balance again, and not to let one extreme overpower the the other, take over the other. This is something that it's talked about in 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 the book I mentioned, the Bhagavad Gita, the. Um, so yeah, that's the idea, basically balance, and you can find this in a lot of uh, the ancient mystery traditions. The goal, the goal in life is to one of the goals in life is to find the the balance um, and harmony between those two two pillars, between those two dualities. And the technique of for doing so, it's called the development of the golden flower. Which I think also Carl Young talked about it in the in the book. I'm not. I don't remember exactly. But anyway. And uh, when you look at different religious trinities, you'll find that most of them can be um, broken down into uh, a relationship between a father, a mother, and a son. And for example, we can look at the Egyptian trinity of Osiris, Isis, and Horus. We can look at the Christian trinity. Um, when you really think about it, the there's also a female aspect to it that's in the middle. The, the dove, the, the, the Holy Ghost, and of course... The church tried to to hide this uh, because it's a male dominator uh, religion. It's all the the left brain aspect. They're hiding the, the the sacred feminine, and that's being represented by the dove by by care, ultimate care, the feminine aspect. Anyway, um, in the Hebrew, the the mystic mystical religion, religion the, the Kabbalah, you can see that uh, trinity that's represented in the tree of life as uh, Hased, mercy, that, that is mercy, Gevura, which means might, and uh, Tiferet in the middle, which means uh, beauty. If you look at uh, these trinities through the lens of psychology, you'll see that they're all uh, similar to the idea of the middle way. This is the path of self-conquest and 
the steady growth of the golden flower which is the awakening of the soul the father the mother and the trinities can be seen as the two pillars of the temple representing the two extremes or opposites in nature this includes things like spirit and matter again love and hate life and death the ebb and flow of things and nature itself is a representation of the two extremes which are two are the two um, opposites of the trinity so this was all for for this video if you like me too i can go a little bit deeper talk about this a little a little more in uh, in another video but this was all for for this one so thanks for watching and if you like the topics i'm talking about and the videos i'll make in the future about symbolism and freemasonry and talk about more more kabbalah and all the occult and esoteric stuff please uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're um so you know when i'll be releasing a, another video and i'll catch you guys in the next one